Hey everybody, this is Wild and Wooly Gaming coming to you live from Illinois, the center of everywhere to bring to you today an incredibly interesting video uh, that I've recent on uh, a topic that I've recently learned about, and it's the fact that the Germans had gas turbine engines that they were ready to fit into their tanks and really build a new fleet of tanks around. This is incredibly awesome uh, stuff that I don't think many people know about. There's hardly any search results on this on uh, on Google, but it's it's something that I'm really excited to share to you guys, uh, with you guys today. So remember, like, comment, subscribe, as all that support means so much to me. But without further ado, what I'll be going over in this video is kind of the history of their gas turbine engines, um, you know, as well as kind of uh, what they did, what their purpose was, and how they might be implemented into War Thunder if that ever happens. So without further ado, and I'm really excited about this because this is a really cool topic. Um, basically, the Germans, uh, starting in the late war, uh, so like 43, 44, uh, were actively developing and producing gas turbine engines, turboshaft uh, engines to be specific. And they were the GT series. So you have the GT 101, 102, and 103. And each subsequent number uh, was essentially an improvement upon the previous. So the GT series was developed from the more famous BMW 003 aircraft engine that is used uh, on the HE-162 Salamander, as well as the ME-262 C2B, which I'm sure many German players are well aware of. Uh, really, the, especially the ME-262, really an, an awesome aircraft to fly. So the goal of this new engine was to create a more powerful uh, power plant, as it were, uh, for that heavier armored vehicles that they were using. And this would be from the Panther tanks all the way through the Yak Tiger. And essentially, um, what they were possibly looking to do was, once the E-Series came out, they were looking to possibly power their E-Series with these engines. Um, you know, it was, it was a possibility that that would happen or at least have some variant powered through these. So basically the these turbo shafts had the benefit of being able to run on low quality fuels, which as I'm sure most of you know, Germany had such a huge shortage of fuels. But what that shortage of fuel means is that they had a huge shortage of regular fuel. When it came to low quality fuel, uh, just kind of stuff that's unusable uh, in other applications or even kerosene, they actually had a fair amount of it near the end of the war, uh, despite the various bombing raids that destroyed their, their regular and high quality fuel supply. So even though the GT series of turbo shafts consumed enormous amounts of fuel, uh, some reports say as much as two times what the regular Maybach HL230 uh, engines consumed, uh, the HL230 was on the Panther tank and variants of it in uh, other vehicles as well. It wouldn't be as much of an issue, again, just due to the relatively large quantities of otherwise unusual low quality fuel that Germany still had. So interestingly, um, even though this became somewhat of a historical footnote, the GT, or again, the gas turbine series, reached production quality, believe it or not, and were ready to be fit into various designs. So they were pretty serious about this, and it's it's amazing to me that there's hardly any knowledge on this. Uh, I couldn't find a YouTube video on this. I couldn't find really much in terms of Google searches, but they did do this, and uh, again, it's really cool. So some stats or some, some pros and cons of of this engine or of these engines. So one of the pros of this is that it has a tremendous power increase over standard uh, armor vehicle powertrains used at the time. So 3,750 horsepower were, was coming out of the GT 101 uh, as compared to about 700 horsepower for the Maybach gas engine. So the majority of this though went to operating the compressor. So this was not an engine that was flying. Um, it, it wasn't an engine that had an enormous amount of uh, air coming into it. Um, so a lot of the power was used running the compressor. Uh, about 2,600 of that 3,750 horsepower was actually going into operating the compressor. So this still left 1,150 horsepower 
to move the vehicle, which is a huge increase over the standard engine. Uh, you know, you're looking at it going from seven, uh, 700 horsepower to, again, 1150. So you're talking a 450 horsepower increase just in terms of the transmission. What, what gets to the transmission? Uh, another pro is the speed capability. So according to some sources, and this is one of the most amazing things I've heard, so strap in. These turbo shafts apparently powered a Panther to go 98 kilometers per hour, about 60 miles per hour uh, in 11 seconds. Uh, and a Jagdtiger to reach 86 kilometers per hour. Imagine that, a Jagdtiger going 86 kilometers per hour. That's insane. That's faster than a lot of modern day tanks. <laughs> Some sources state that these engines were fitted uh, to working tanks, while others claim that they were paper designs or even just fitted to mock tanks. So there's kind of, at least in my research, been a lack of consistency, and that makes these claims somewhat dubious. But they're an interesting idea, I think, you know, to be sure. And if they are real, kind of like the ME262 HG uh, series, the HG2, how some people say it flew, some people say it didn't. If they are real, that would be amazing. Uh, another one of the pros is that it's able to use kerosene, which was in um, relatively high supply for the Germans at that time. Uh, finally, uh, one of the biggest pros was that it was actually fairly lightweight. Now, common knowledge or common wisdom would state that uh, more power would have to come from a larger or heavier engine. That's not the case here. So this only weighed about 450 kilograms or 1,000 pounds, whereas the engine it replaced was around 1,200 kilograms or about 2,650 pounds. This means that the turbo shaft weighed only about 38% of the standard gas engines uh, put into these tanks at the time, while delivering about 64% more power uh, to the transmission. Now this helped to bring the power uh, to weight ratio of the Panther from about 13 and a half horsepower per ton to around 27 horsepower per ton, uh, which is higher power to weight ratio than even the M1 Abrams of today. So unfortunately, uh, you know, for some people, there would essentially be a speed limiter placed on the Panthers uh, fitted with this new engine, essentially just to avoid uh, undue wear and tear, which makes sense. I mean, it would be really funny or fun to see a, a, a 60 mile per hour Panther kind of just going wherever it wants. You know, I mean, that'd be like a Hellcat Panther, but it just wasn't going to happen even if these were produced unless some uh, aspiring tank commander or engineer were to remove it. Uh, some of the cons was that it uh, actually had relatively low torque at a low RPM, which makes sense. Um, it took some time to get up to speed. Uh, this was fixed with later models of the GT series, like the GT2, uh, but I'll get into that in a few moments. Uh, as mentioned before, it consumed huge quantities of fuel, about two times as much as a standard uh, gas engine for the time. They were still unproven and possibly mechanically unreliable, uh, even considering German tank reliability standards. Uh, although the BMW 003 engine, as compared to the Junkers Jumo 004, which was mounted on the um, on the ME262 fighters, the BMW 003 apparently, according to some sources, had a 200 hour complete overhaul time, whereas the Junkers Jumo 004 had about had about a um, a 50 hour complete overall uh, overhaul time, uh, you know, by the end of the war. So, additionally, one of the other cons was that it was just was awkward to fit into already designed vehicles. So, essentially, they didn't design the vehicles around this engine. Rather, they had to kind of figure out a way to put the engine into already pre-made vehicles. So, this would have made you they they actually had to make sacrifices in current vehicle designs just to fit these in uh, such as uh, for example with the panther and the gt 101 they actually had to open the entire exhaust and intake system uh, which would make it extremely vulnerable to enemy fire so as i mentioned there are other variants of these uh, engines as well uh, including the gt 102 and the gt 103 the GT-102 was essentially a design upgrade and featured what essentially uh, was a solution to the size issue. So the Germans separated the power turbine from the engine itself, uh, which made it so that the engine could always be running. 
uh, which largely fixed the low RPM torque issue uh, with the GT101. Uh, additionally, the separation between the two main parts of the engine meant that it could be mounted transversely uh, in the Panther, uh, which meant that the changes in tank design required to mount production Panthers with GT turbines uh, built in uh, would not have to occur. So this essentially avoided the open exhaust system, uh, which in and of itself uh, would have required a reduction in armor around the, uh, the exhaust ports. It also made it so that more fuel could be stored in the tank uh, for longer range, which was especially important considering how ridiculous uh, the fuel consumption was on them, uh, which was fixed by the GT103, uh, which was a variant ascent, uh, that was introduced to uh, help fix the fuel efficiency issues. So this variant introduced a heat exchanger, which essentially used the hot exhaust to help preheat the air from the compressor uh, that would then flow into the combustion chamber. So if you're familiar with turbochargers, uh, exhaust driven turbochargers, it's kind of the same idea in how it uses heat or you know already uh, used gases. So basically waste byproduct to help make the, uh, the actual product more efficient. Um, so this would help to, to otherwise you to this would help to use the otherwise lost energy to save fuel by making it so that the fuel no longer had to continually heat the air to 800 degrees Celsius, at least entirely to 800 degrees Celsius uh, for the engine to work properly. Rather, around 120 degrees of this um, of the heating will have already been done uh, thanks to the heat exchanger. So this figure to be about 30% fuel savings uh, on the overall tank design or engine design. So designers actually considered using a second heat exchanger in addition, uh, in another part of the engine, in addition to this heat exchanger, which they actually figured would save about another 30% of fuel, which would be huge. Uh, that would make it comparable to the regular Maybach gas engines already in, uh, in use uh, in terms of fuel consumption. So something that a lot of people uh, were really striving for because if you're kind of a, a, a German tech buff like I am, uh, you'll see that especially with their turbine, well in this case their turbines, but really with their jet based uh, engine designs, they made huge strides in the last few months of the war that may, like many people don't recognize. For example, the Junkers Jumo 004, if I'm not mistaken, the E variant actually had an afterburner on it, which is something that most people really don't know. Uh, the fact that, <laughs> that that engine had afterburners and it was ready for production. Uh, in much the same way, they had turbo shafts that were ready for tank mounting. And the first tank to actually receive a turbo shaft in terms of uh, a production tank wasn't until about 10 or 15 years after World War II. So the Germans were far ahead of their time. But that being said, what would this mean for War Thunder? So adding these tanks would not be without precedent especially for the Germans. So the Germans already have numerous alternatively powered vehicles, such as the VK4501, which has the gas electric powertrain, and the Tiger II SLA-16, which has a diesel engine, which accelerates more quickly. Uh, and also the, the gas electric powertrain for the VK actually makes or allows you to uh, go in reverse much more quickly, uh, you know, to the point where it's actually comparable to many... Uh, uh, main battle tanks for the modern era uh, so it's again it's not without precedent so much like these vehicles the gt powered panther and yacht tiger would almost certainly be premium vehicles if they were ever introduced and they would end up likely sitting at 0.3 br higher than their uh, similar tank peers so uh you know the turbo shaft powered version of the yacht tiger probably be at least 0.3 higher than the regular Jagdtiger, um, as well as a turboshaft Panther. That'd probably be more of like an in-between between the Panther F and the Panther II. I could see it sitting at 6.3 or 6.7. And, um, you know, just, just for this pure speed, um, I'd be interested to see if they ever did introduce this, if they would introduce the GT-102, because the fuel savings uh, added by the GT-103, at least in the current game of War Thunder, would be negligible or uh, unimportant because there's not really a fuel concern in the game right now. 
but in terms of acceleration as something that people would love and that's something that the SLA 16 uh, Tiger 2 variant actually offers over the regular Tiger 2. So one thing that that you probably notice when it comes to uh, these vehicles and using them in game is that they would have a reduced tur uh, just a reduced rotation speed. Some people will call it a uh, I guess you could say a transverse speed uh, while sitting still just due to the turbo shaft not having as much torque um, at low RPM. So unless it were the GT 102 and even still it probably wouldn't have as as much torque as a regularly um, you know I guess you could say engined tank. So these tanks would act more similarly to main uh, to modern main battle tanks in terms of mobility, uh, given the high power to weight ratio. And this is something that, again, I'd be fairly interested to see how Gaijin would do it, because as mentioned before, they would in real life have put in a speed limiter, because at the end of the day, you know, it's fun and cool that you have a Hellcat Panther or a freaking a jet <laughs> Yag Tiger that can go faster than a freaking Abrams, but <laughs> it's re it's really cool that, that you know that 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 could happen. But it, is it feasible? No. Um, and you know, with War Thunder, with Gaijin being pretty firmly on the historical side, I don't think that they would introduce it if they ever did with the speed limiter. Um, off you know um so that would kind of raise a question what would the improvement be then right if it has poor acceleration uh in the gt 101 series um and it has a speed limiter so you're taking away its main advantage of top speed and you're keeping it with its main disadvantage of poor acceleration what would the benefit be to this and I think that they could, you know, do a lot of things. I'm not so sure about what the reverse speeds were on these things, so uh, it could probably be fairly similar, um, just being that the reverse speed on the Panther, uh, outside of the Panther 2, is fairly atrocious. Um, you know, but ultimately, it would probably just end up that these would be either event tanks, premium tanks, uh, pack tanks, just something cool. And I think that Gaijin would really benefit from having these tanks in-game, just because of how absurd they were and just how cool of a piece of history they were. And it's not something I'm expecting them to do or even put into the game in a few years, even if they were going to put it into the game. But it's just such a cool thing. Um, you know, and just the whole turbo shaft idea, you'd think that, hey, this is a more modern idea, but no, the Germans were pioneering that too. So either way, guys, tell me what you guys think. I want to know if you think that these tanks will ever come to War Thunder, um, how they'll be implemented if they ever do. And, uh, you know, tell me if you thought the history was really cool. Uh, I had a lot of fun researching this video. And, I mean, it's just so cool that they made these uh, and that they were actually produced. And according to some accounts, they were used in real tanks. Um, albeit to a limited degree. And they had plans for putting them into further tanks. So again, I'm, I'm kind of getting off my uh, my rocker here. Just I'm still really excited about it. Uh, remember, like, comment, subscribe, especially subscribe. It means a ton to me. And, uh, you know, just put some comments down there. I really want to know what you guys think. Either way, uh, you know, thanks for watching my video. This is uh, Wild and Wooly. Not saying goodnight, just saying. See you guys later. Take care.